Hey everybody, Danny Jones, Singing News Magazine. Welcome to Danny's Diary, the podcast powered by Singing News Magazine. My guest today, Ricky Carden of the Down East Boys, and let's address this important issue at the very beginning of this podcast. The reason why I'm wearing <laughs> this Boston Red Sox hat is simply because the person we are interviewing today has the reputation of being the largest New York Yankees fan in Southern gospel music. So I knew, I knew <laughs> I something wearing uh, or talking about. I wore it. I wore it just. Hey, I wore it just for you, Daddy. And uh, man, no baseball though, right? We've. we've I know. Been, I know. Uh, I mean, you know, when, when you start looking at reruns of baseball games from you know back the days of the Big Red Machine and and all these other, uh, you know, yeah. we were growing up. You know, you're you're like, okay, well, the baseball was good back then too, but uh, I'd like to see something from today. So you know what's great is though, me and the kids have been doing that, and we've been watching. Let's see, twenty-seven World Series victories, I think it is now. So, good luck for Boston. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, <laughs> we had a great year in two thousand eighteen. <laughs> it yeah. was a great year. Okay, it was right. So, and if you don't like the Boston hat, I'll put on a Atlanta Braves hat in a few minutes. Anyway, all right, so. 2018, great year for the Red Sox. Yeah. 2019 was a great year for the Down East Boys. Uh, uh, scored not only uh, a number one song, had two number one songs. And uh, as 2020 uh, was rolling along, you know, you had another one. And it's just been a great past 12, 15 months for the group, hasn't it? It really has, Danny. Um, man, you know, we started off with Beat Up Bible. Uh, you get one and you're excited, as you well know. Uh, you and I have talked over the years about that, and, and one was exciting. Uh, then to follow it up with another one, uh, and then six months later to be there again with, with the third number one song off the project. Uh, you, you can't uh, – I can't describe to you how awesome it was to, to just know that the folks were receiving the songs, you know, and, and you work hard to put the music together. And so – man, to get three number ones off of a project. And um, certainly uh, for me, it was exciting and after 30 years of being out here on the road and uh, just appreciate everybody who was a part of it. And hey, I hope the folks enjoyed the music. It was, um, there were some special songs and, and we of course still have requests for them. Yeah. And you know, you, you brought up the 30 years, um, believe it or not. And you and I, you, you and I have talked about this kind of thing several times. Um, there is really no such thing as an overnight success in gospel music. Most overnight success stories are 30 years in the making. Um, believe it or not, a lot of people were unfamiliar with the Down East Boys on a national level until the number one sure. song hit. And, but yet, you know, Ricky Carden's been around with that group for three decades. Huh. In fact, that's the only group that you've sang with uh, professionally. Now, there's been a time or two you filled in along the way with the Hoppers way, way back. Way back, yeah. But, it, but the Down East Boys, well, this, this is your, your one and only. Yeah, I, I started at 19. Uh, man, that's a long time ago now. Yeah. And, um, you know, was hired on uh, pretty much out of high school and started singing here four years later. Uh, the owner retires from the road and, and says, hey, you know, I think you can do this. And all of a sudden you're trying to run a group and, and you've never managed anything. And uh, you just love the music and, and you want to keep doing it. So you learn through the process. And uh, 30 years later, here we are, same, uh, you know, same group, uh, different buses along the way and, and different members along the way. But uh, just blessed man to, to be able to do it for 30 years and I, I didn't realize how much I would miss it um, I always told my wife you know when the day comes I'll know when it's time to, to walk away I hope and uh, man I've missed it so much these last three months I, I didn't realize how much you really miss what you do and how much you love it until it's gone so uh, still love the music and, and I miss the traveling and hopefully we'll be back on the road soon. 
Well, that, that's the, uh, the goal of everyone, to get back out as quickly as possible and as safely as possible. Let's go back to the very early days of Ricky Carden and the Down East Boys. Actually, let's go one step further. How did you find your way to the Southern Gospel Music Table? Well, you know, I had a mom and dad that loved this music. And, of course, they sang in a, in a group here. And uh, so I was already involved in riding the buses and, and going out. They were weekend warriors, as we call them. And so they, they loved the music and, and had always been a part of it. So I was around it very early. And, and then I remember at the age of 12, I went to the very first concert. And, you know, Danny, in those days, we everything was in the high school auditoriums. And so there were three or four groups on the program, and you'd go to the high school um, and, and see concerts on Saturday nights or Sunday afternoons. And so I remember the first concert that really struck a chord with me. I saw the Singing Americans. Uh, they were in Eden, North Carolina at the Moorhead High School Auditorium. That, that auditorium still exists. Uh, we actually sang there a few months back with the Hoppers. And so um, we, we walk into that auditorium and I saw Danny Funderburk, Ivan Parker, Ed Hill, and Dwayne Burke uh, sing. And I, I was captivated by the music and, and how it moved me that night and how it moved those people uh, in the auditorium. There were 1,200 people crammed in the place. And, and I thought, man, I, I want to, I want to be a part of this. I want to do this. And not, not knowing, uh, you know, even if I could sing really yet or not, but I knew I loved the music and I loved what those guys were doing and I wanted to be a part of it. And so I, I began to, to plot that course, uh, always, working, trying to, to get better vocally growing up through those years, singing in church, singing with mom and dad, singing anywhere I had a chance to really. And, and so uh, at 19, you jump on and think, man, I'm ready to go. And you learn real quick that there's so much more to it. Uh, but I, I remember those early days and how that music affected me. And, and I just wanted to be a part of it and, and thank the Lord I've been able to do that now. Yeah. And uh, many people don't realize that uh, a hop, skip, and a jump from you is the hometown of the Hoppers. So obviously you, you, uh, you've spent some time around them and they helped introduce you to the Southern Gospel stage, did they not? Well, they did. Uh, without them, I, I really wouldn't be here today, I don't think. Uh, I, I was fortunate to meet some of them, of course, Greg Bentley, uh, was singing with them at the time, and a gentleman playing the piano named Shannon Childress and uh, Claude and Connie. And, you know, I, I went to a concert. Mom and Dad, we always, they were close by, so we would see them quite often. And I just made friends with them over that time. And uh, when Dean and Kim were dating, uh, Dean would sometimes go on the road with the Greens, and they would need somebody to sing. And so um, they called me up one day and said, hey, can you do this? And of course, wholeheartedly, I said, absolutely, I can. So I jumped on a plane and flew down to Florida and they picked me up and I jumped on the bus. And that night I hit the stage with the hoppers and had no idea what to do or how to do. But uh, it was, it was an awesome experience. And from that time on, if they needed somebody to fill in, uh, I would do that. And of course, Claude always said, anytime you're home, anytime you want to ride, uh, you come on over to Madison and jump on the bus. So I, I took them up on that offer, uh, whether it was unloading equipment or uh, whatever they needed. Uh, that's what I would do when I rode the bus. And so I got to experience bus life. I got to experience the traveling from town to town and place to place. And I got to watch, I believe, some of the greatest people in Connie and Claude Hopper. Uh, I watched them and, and how they uh, – you know, dealt with, with the people every night and loved on the people. And I realized very early on, this is a people business and, and folks, uh, they come to your record table. They want to talk to you. They, they want to be a part of what you're doing. And uh, Connie and Claude have always been so good to, uh, they'd stand around all night if they had to, to talk to people and visit. And, and so uh, I learned a lot from them. And one of the main things I learned was, Hey, it's all about the people and, and you love on those people and, and they'll take care of you. And folks have done that. Exactly. And still today, they're some of your closest friends, as is a, a name that you brought up a, a little while ago, Greg Bentley. Uh, Greg, uh, it's, it's amazing how everything goes full circle. You know, Greg yeah. was here in the very early days of your career. 
And now you two are working together again uh, uh, through the record company, Crossroads. He's with Crossroads, and of course, that's the label of the Down East Boys. Right. You know, it's, it's funny because, Greg, I met him with the Hoppers. Then he goes with the Down East Boys to sing tenor, calls me up and says, we need a lead singer. So I think here's my opportunity. I sang with Greg for, I think, about a year and a half or so before he moved on to Squire Parsons. And, and so we were able to sing together there. I uh, wouldn't have this position had I not known Greg and he know that, that I was available. And then he ends up at our record company. He's now the A&R director. And so I deal with him every day on, on decisions and things we need to do for promoting songs and promoting this, the music. And uh, so we're, we're longtime friends and here we've been together, whether it be from just riding the bus together, singing together and now working together as a record company. So, uh, definitely full circle on that. And Greg's a great guy and, and works so hard for us and we appreciate it. Right. Well, speaking of promotion, I need to drop this in right now. Folks, you are watching Danny's Diary, a podcast powered by Singing News Magazine. And Ricky Carden would agree with this statement. If you do not have Singing News coming to your mailbox every month, you need to take care of that right now. It's very simple. All you have to do is call 800-527-5226 go to singingnews.com and follow the subscri uh, subscription links. I'll get it out in a minute. <laughs> follow those links and you too can keep up with the Down East Boys and all their friends in Southern Gospel Music. Who knows, you might even see the Down East Boys on the cover. As a matter of fact, if you hey. had been subscribing to the Singing News over the past 12 months, you would have seen the Down East Boys on the cover of Singing Absolutely. News. Absolutely. And uh, who knows, it'll come back around sooner or later That's so right. what is uh what's uh what's in the near future for the down east boys i know we're all waiting for the for the signal to get back out on the road but uh once that arrives what's on the agenda well you know for us danny we we were just releasing a brand new project and so we were uh supposed to release in may and we finished up the middle of March and thought we'd be on the road in a couple of weeks. And here we've been now for, I don't even know how many weeks it's been, I guess 12, 13 weeks. And so for, for us, we've had to completely change and promote a new project and new music to people in different ways that we've never done before. Uh, hopefully when we get back on the road, we're able to start promoting new music. We've only been able to sing it a few times and we've done some Facebook lives and things like that. But uh, we haven't been on the road to share with the with the folks the new music. And so for us, it'll be getting back out on the road, learning the new music, and, and jumping in with both feet trying to promote the new uh, music to the people. And, and hopefully we'll get that sooner than later. I, I know uh, we're picking up a few dates here and there. Some places are open, some aren't. But, man, we're just hoping to get back out on the road and be able to, to share the new music. Right. You know, every group uh, on the professional level faces uh, uh, a little more difficulty than just their home state reopening. They have to watch what's happening, you know, eight states away or things right. like that. And you take someone like the Down East Boys, whose touring schedule was not limited to the Southeast because right. you, uh, along the way of the, uh, the Down East Boys, you were got outside the box, if you will. You went to Colorado, you went to Washington State. A lot of the groups tended to stay in the Southeast and that's fine, nothing wrong with that. But as you were watching things develop, you were you, you were in the mindset of, you know, that's, that's a lot of groups in one area. Let's go somewhere different where they don't have an opportunity to hear this music as much. Right. So for a lot of the three decades of the Down East Boys, You've spent a lot, a lot, and I mean a lot of diesel fuel going out west, going up north, going into Canada. Uh, you've gotten off the, the beaten path quite a bit. We we did. We we learned. Uh, you know, I learned from Claude Hopper. He said you gotta you gotta go and and create new places and new venues. And so I, I tried to work uh, in the last 15, 20 years at going to those new places and establishing ourselves in those areas. And we were fortunate to do that this year. We've lost several of those dates, um, places we would go in Canada, place we would go actually coming up this weekend, we were headed up to Maine and, and that area. And so uh, our West coast trip, we did every year, sometimes twice a year, we would go out to the West coast and, and work California, Oregon, Washington, Nevada, Arizona. And so we haven't been able to, to do that this year. 
And hopefully, we're hoping that in October we'll be able to go to the Midwest and go back and make our Colorado run that we do every year. And we always hit Colorado, Wyoming, Nebraska. And what we found is people out there love the music just like they do in the South. They just don't get it as much. So it's always good to, to be able to go. But now we have to watch and see, hey, what state is opening? Uh, hey, pastor, are you going to be able to open up your buildings and things? Because we can't drive 20 hours to a place and they say we can't go inside. It's outside if it rains. Uh, no way to have a concert. So uh, it's changed the strategy for the fall for us, um, wondering uh, how close can we work to home, uh, yet still try to expand a little bit out and stay in places we can hopefully begin to go inside. All right. And, you know, speaking of the West Coast and your touring out there, this thought just came to my mind. Several years ago, when uh, the Down East Boys went from a trio to a quartet, uh, that uh, brought about a change in buses for you because at the time the bus that the Down East Boys were traveling, it was not really set up for more than four people. Right. Well, I happen to have, at that time, a bus <laughs> that was set up for more than three or four people. And so you and I worked out a little agreement that you would take my bus on your West Coast trip and I would use yours while you were gone. Worked out <laughs> great. Except while you had my bus out on the West Coast, let's see, you had to uh, replace a windshield, I believe, because of an <laughs> owl. And then, uh, was it in Colorado when you backed it up? Uh, back the bus into the one light pole in the parking lot. Was that, is that where You know happened? what, Danny, the video skipping. I, I can't understand. <laughs> right, right. You can't understand me. Right, okay. Well, anyway. Yeah, we, we, uh, we did, we took out an owl uh, out in California, and Brian Franklin was driving at the time, our good friend, and, and, and Brian was driving. I'll never forget it, man. It sounded like a cannon went off in the front of the bus, and glass went everywhere. But we had to put duct tape, you know, duct tape on every bus. That's how you get to the next place. And right. so we literally duct taped what was left and put some cardboard and stuff up in the window so we could continue going uh, to get to a town that had a windshield. We replaced the windshield. We finished up in Colorado. We'd had the bus for, I, I guess it was 25, 30 days. But no, no problems at all. And it's snowing out. They asked me to move the bus, and I go out, and I back the bus into a light pole. <laughs> yep, you did. Now, now the, 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 here, here's the really cool part about that. Ricky Carden is the kind of guy who, let's say he come, came over to your house and borrowed your lawnmower, okay? He's the kind of guy who would take that lawnmower, cut the grass, and when he brought it back, he'd make sure the lawnmower was clean, showroom spotless, make yeah. sure the fuel tank was full, <laughs> oil was new, all of that. So I know the anguish oh. Rick Carden was in when he had to call me and say, you're not going to believe what I did. <laughs> Man, okay. that was a, I'll never forget that phone call either. And, and you were just, just calm about it. Like, and I thought, man, if that was my bus, I I'd be, I'd be off the rockers, like send me pigs. How can, you know, what's happening? But uh, you were kind, Danny, and we got it fixed, I well, know. But, uh, you know, that's why, that's why we all paid the insurance premiums we were paying. At that's the right. That's exactly right. But that, uh, that was, you know, that, that, I had forgotten about that until you, we started talking about the West Coast trips. But, uh, you know, that's the, the neat thing about gospel music. Uh, even though we're all in business, if you will, we're all one big family. We're friends. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the behind the scene stories are really right. incredible. There's some great moments. You've had plenty of them. And uh, you and I, uh, just by the sheer fact of being in the same building at the same time, we have witnessed some greatest things. For example, years ago, uh, uh, you guys used to do a uh, homecoming event in uh, Emerald Isle on the coast of yeah. North Carolina. And uh, we saw one of the, uh, one of the best, performances ever by the bishops it was just one of those nights everything just worked yep. great and we were all sitting there like okay the rapture can happen now it's not right. really any better you know yeah. when you think about that and all the experiences that you've had with claude and connie and all the other folks along the way it really makes you thankful that you've been a part of gospel music absolutely um for example, I, I just give you some quick examples, Danny, but the, the first number one we had, uh, I had no idea 
it, for me, it was exciting. For the guys, it was exciting. But once that word hit the street that, hey, the guys just had their first number one song, uh, it took probably two days to reply to all the emails and texts, not from people outside, but the groups, the, the friends that we knew from the inside, other record companies even, uh, who were sending congratulations and so proud for you guys. And then, you know what I, I found even more in the last couple of months is, is how tight a knit family that we really are. Uh, so many of the different members of groups, you'll get a, you know, you wake up in the morning and you look down and you get a text from somebody that says, hey man, thinking about you today, keep your chin up, uh, keep working, we'll be back on the road soon. They're not even in my group. They're not a part of what I'm doing here, but they're a part of the overall music uh, of gospel music. And it, it's so neat to, to be able to have that camaraderie with your, your, your other people who are within the industry and to know that everybody's pulling for everybody. Nobody's uh, sitting out here thinking, hey, maybe, maybe some groups end up not on the road anymore. And man, that's you know, not a good thing, but you don't hear from them. As it is, we're all pulling for each other and everybody's talking to each other and uh, throwing ideas out to try to help everybody maintain and get through this time. So it's, it, it's a tight-knit family. It's a tight-knit industry. And I've been fortunate to be out here this long. And, and it's neat to, to see how folks come together. Yeah. Uh, for those uh, viewers who are not familiar with the Down East Boys, uh, Ricky does not do this alone. He's got uh, three very talented uh vocalist on stage. With Absolutely. Daryl Pascal, the baritone vocalist of the Down East Boys. He's been there for how long now? 13 years. He's been traveling with me. That's a long time. And he would probably tell you it feels like a long time putting up with me. But yeah, I, I was going to that, but anyway. <laughs> Daryl's been faithful. And, you know, he lives right here. Uh, one of those fortunate things that happens when you're looking for somebody Normally, you have to look off somewhere. You hire somebody. They have to move in. As it was, Daryl was basically four or five miles from where the bus just parked. And he came up to me about three months before I knew I would even need anybody. We sang with their group, and he said, hey, uh, if you ever need somebody to go on the road, I'd love a chance. And so when I called him, there was no hesitation. He was ready to go. And he's been here ever since and always faithful. Many he shows up ready to do his job. And, and so he's a, as Mark Trammell would say, he's a good quartet man. He, he yeah. knows how to get out here and, and you know what's got to happen. We got to go sing, whether it's outside 90 degrees or inside, whatever it takes, whatever we got to do to make the date happen. That's what we do. And Daryl's always jumped in with that. I, I remember the day that you called and said, okay, I, I, I've settled on Daryl. He, he's a good singer, you know, he, he'll, he'll do fine. But the part I like best about this is he knows the songs, he knows his parts, he's, he's just ready to step on the bus and go. Yeah, and yeah, he was ready. I gave him three CDs worth of music and said, learn these songs. And with Daryl, we even threw him a curve. We were in the a process of recording. And so uh, Daryl, before he ever sang a note on stage with us, actually had to learn 10 brand new songs in the studio with Wayne Hahn producing, and we actually cut a new project before he ever hit the road. Three weeks later, he's on the road with all the other songs he has to learn, and then we start adding in the new songs. So, man, he he had to learn a lot of music really fast, and and he did because, he, you know what, he wanted to do it. It's what he wanted to do for uh, a living and be out here with, with guys traveling and singing. And so he gave it his all, and he does every night. He's always right there with me. Right. And the bookends of the group, the tenor and the bass, they're giving it all too, aren't they? They absolutely are. Doug Pittman, I've said for the last two years that he's been here now, almost three, that uh, Doug is a phenomenal tenor singer. And not only can he sing, but he's very talented with computers and, uh, you know, doing things, designing. Uh, he does a lot of our Facebook work. He does all of our website work. And, and Doug is just a godsend. I, I'm I'm old school. I have a hard time even doing these meetings we're doing like this with Zoom and Skype and all these things. And man, Doug can sit down at a computer and he does all of our design work. Um, and he's been doing a lot of the videos folks have been seeing on Facebook. He's been putting all those together. And so uh, Doug is just a, a great asset, not only with his singing, which is top notch, but then 
what he can do with technical things. And he runs our sound too. And he's phenomenal with that. So uh, Doug is a blessing. And then to have our bass singer, Zach Barham, who came out of nowhere, uh, Zach lives 15 minutes from Reedsville and I never met him before. Uh, here's the story we all hear. And, you know, as we sing, if, if you're fortunate to sing as long as I have, you get the story of I saw you sing when I was a kid. And Zach's got that story and the picture to prove it. And we went to his church and sang when he was 10, 11 years old. And now here he is traveling with me today. And man, a phenomenal bass singer who couldn't move, uh, wasn't able to go to any other group and just was looking for an opportunity and took a shot with us and said, I want to sing. And uh, he's been here for a couple of years now and just an awesome bass singer and a great guy. So he's been a lot of fun. So you're, you're carrying around a bass singer that came to see you uh, as a child. <laughs> your, uh, your daughters are just literally weeks away from uh, enrolling in college. And, uh, you know, how does it feel to be the old man of the group? You know, Danny, I never, I never thought it would be like, you always think of yourself that, you know, you, you feel good and you're out here on the road and all of a sudden you look around and, and Doug Pittman's talking about, yeah, I remember when you came to so-and-so church and sang and, and the bass singer says, oh yeah, you sang at my church and here's a picture of me in front of the bus. And uh, I told Daryl, I said, man, I, I feel old, but at the same time, I appreciate these young guys because now... I'm reaping the benefit of just sitting on the couch and watching them unload. <laughs> yeah, so it's yeah. pretty good. <laughs> One thing that's never changed in gospel music, the equipment is still heavy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so. so I let them young guys do that now, and uh, I'll handle the bus driving and, and things like that. But those guys work hard, and uh, thank God for young people because the equipment does get heavier by the year, it seems like to me. So. It does. Hey, before we go, we've got one final question for Ricky Carden. Who's going to win the World Series? <laughs> if they play it, it'll be the Yankees. It'll oh, be no, these guys no, right here. No, no. But I right. don't know. I don't think we're going to have one this year. I sure hope so. I miss it, but we'll see. Well, I, I'm beginning to think that uh, we, we just need to uh, cancel our tickets for 2020, uh, and we will pick up this uh, small yet friendly rivalry uh, in 2021. And when 2021, you're on, and we'll make a trip to Boston, and I'll watch the Yankees beat them in Boston. No, Go Yanks. Not going to happen. <laughs> not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. All right, folks. Our guest today has been Ricky Carden of the Down East Boys. Thanks for tuning in to Danny's Diary, the podcast powered by Singing News. <laughs>